Welcome back to Trial and Error. Today's video is going to walk you through the complete replacement of surge brakes on a trailer. Similar setups are found in just about every boat trailer out there. Uh, what I have here is some pretty heavy 6,000 pound axles because this is a single axle trailer. They also make a dual axle with two 3,500 pound axles for the same size boat. I prefer the single axle. It's just less stuff to go wrong, less maintenance, and the bigger tires seem to, for whatever reason, hold up better than, well, maybe it's because the dual axle ones, whenever you're turning, you're dragging a tire, basically. So these single tire ones, easier maneuver. I like them much better. But at any rate, that's neither here nor there. Then where is it? Uh, I'm going to walk you through that process, show you what to buy and how to install it. So uh, hang in there as we uh, do the stuff that we don't like to do so that we can get on the water and do the things that we like to do. Okay, so I've got the boat jacked up just enough so that the tire can spin. I've put a jack stand under the very end of the trailer and one up near, about halfway I would say, up one side just to make sure it is super stable and I leave my hydraulic, it's a four ton hydraulic jack uh, under it as well because you really can't be too safe when you've got, boat weighs about 4,300 pounds so one of the heavier vehicles that I own actually. Don't jack your vehicles a foot high off the ground. It should be easier than a college girl with a lower back tattoo just enough to get the tire off and that way when you go to put it back on you don't even have to hold it while you're trying to line up the lugs or the holes it just slides right in so take it from me with a bad back lift the least amount that you have to okay next up we're gonna just gently pry off the grease cap this is a reusable part so try not to damage it if you do damage it they're easily found at just about any place um, but try not to bend it too badly just slowly work it side to side until it pops off Next, you're going to want to definitely be wearing gloves and grab an old rag or a pair of socks, but not the kind that are crusty white and stand up on their own. We're going to need to get all the grease out of there so you can see what you're working with and find the nut as well as the retaining clip that holds that nut in place. Once you've either removed the pin or bent back the bracket as you see here uh, that retains that nut and keeps it from spinning itself off while you're driving, you can uh, grab a wrench. You, you may not even need it. That nut shouldn't be on very tight at all. If it is, you're probably going to be doing bearings while you're in there. But uh, remove that main castle nut that holds on the whole hub, basically. I know it looks like the nut I have here is on there pretty tight, but I'm actually just grinding up the retaining clip. It's not a reusable item, so I, I bend most of it out of the way as best you can, but it, it's hard to see, so sometimes it's just easier to get rid of the easy stuff and then uh, just mash it <laughs> as you're back, backing that nut off because like I said it's not a reusable component even if you can bend it back into place the metal is weak you don't want to be reusing it so in this particular arrangement behind the castle nut you will see the retaining ring which is like a washer that has a little section that comes out and goes between the low points of the castle nut Behind that is a pretty heavy washer and that's what rides against the outer lip of the outer bearing. But bear in mind, those bearings are not meant for lateral loads. They are meant just as roller bearings. So you just want them snug enough that they are uh, not allowing any play in the tire, but not so snug as to be tight, which will increase friction. Uh, it has them wearing in a way that they are not designed to wear and they will wear out extremely quickly. I know it may seem obvious, but in order to get rid of the old grease, you wanna only use a tan dress sock. You'll notice I switched from black to tan because tan does the best job at removing old grease from the axle shaft. As you can see, I'm kind of a pro here. I work the shaft, but I always make sure to pay special attention to the tip and really get in there and clean that tip nice. At this point, you really want to inspect the axle and the mating surfaces where the bearings sit. As you can see, mine has seen some heat in the past and probably wasn't serviced well before I got it. And uh, actually has a little bit of scoring on the outer bearing. And that's not a good thing, but it's not bad enough to warrant a axle replacement 
at this point. Uh, you, if it's really deeply scored, that's where you, you, you run into some problems. But um, if it looks like this, it will service you for a lifetime, as long as you continue to take care of it. So an important part of a boat trailer is the ability to back the damn thing into the water, right? So these are what are called free backing brakes. And it, it's very similar to a standard uh, drum brake, but there are a few different little differences you might notice versus a car or something like that. Uh, for one thing, this single-sided piston is only pushing on the forwardmost pad. And then the other thing you'll notice is the pivot points are not in the center of the pads themselves, they're actually off a little bit. And what that does is when the car, or when the trailer is going backwards, the leading edge that's grabbing this can't bite. So it allows the trailer to go backwards, even though you may have a load towing, pushing against the master cylinder, which is, in this case, the hitch. So kind of a, a neat little system. There's a bunch of different ways that they do this, and some of them are electronic, some of them have manual lockout. These are just simple, old school, mechanical um, physics, really. And you can't go wrong with physics because it's physics. So next we're just gonna remove the original backing plates by removing the five nuts and bolts that go through the original backing plate and mount to the axle flange. So these complete backing plate assemblies can be had for a lot less expensive than you might think. I was very surprised. I mean, when you piece out the costs of the piston, um, just doing the regular brake pads themselves, and the backing plate, and then you factor in the fact that it's 100% assembled, ready to go, I mean, that, that's huge. So I'm going to link in the description to that as well as a few other items that I'm using during this, including the vacuum pump and stuff like that. So if uh, you're taking this job on yourself, go to the links in the description and that'll take you right to those products. While this isn't the main point of the video, I will touch on I am replacing all the bearings and the races. This is for a 6,000 pound 12 by 2 inch brake. Uh, pretty common and pretty standard in this size range. So you can see the part numbers there uh, for the overpriced Napa parts that I bought a while back and I'm just now installing, but uh, very straightforward process there. Obviously the bearings just pop right out. The races, you do need to heat up the drum to expand it, and then the races pop right out, um, and then press right back into place. But uh, not rocket science, but those are your part numbers if you are looking to do a bearing replacement as well. You shouldn't have any problem now just taking the drum and putting it right back over the spindle and over the new brakes and pads. In the event that you do and it's hitting the pads, there's an adjustment at the bottom, which we're going to be touching on later anyway, um, that allows you to suck those pads in as far as they can go, at which point you should have no problem sliding the drum back on. You can finish up the reassembly by putting in that last bearing, the outermost bearing, followed by the retaining washer, as well as your retaining clip, or whatever it is that happens to hold your castle nut, or nut in general, in place. Then just kind of hand tighten in that uh, castle nut, that final nut. Then we're gonna crank that thing down nice and tight. We're gonna give it a couple of spins in each direction and then we're gonna back that off till it's loose basically. Not super loose, still should have a hair bit of tension. Not even, like half a hair, like half a sea hair of tension. Um, but no play. You're going to check that for, for play uh, back and forth. We, we don't want to feel any knocking whatsoever. It should be nice and, and snug, but we also want to make sure that, that thing is able to rotate freely. Next, bend that tab out so that that nut doesn't have the opportunity to work itself either tighter or looser because both of them are equally as dangerous. Now, I guess looser is probably a little more dangerous, but if you go too tight, eventually that wheel is going to burn itself up and probably fall off anyway. And then the only other thing is to make sure that you use the little grease fitting on the very center of the axle to pump some new fresh grease in. Obviously the new bearings are already packed, uh, but give that a few more pumps too just to make sure there's plenty of grease in the galley there. So now we're going to throw the tire back on because we're going to have to get under the trailer and why only trust jack stands when you can put the tire on too and have triple protection so 
We'll bolt the tire up and then we'll go under to the brake line portion. Whoa, almost forgot. You don't want to be the only a-hole at the boat ramp without shiny tires. <laughs> You're also going to want to take this time to adjust your brakes so that the shoes are just touching the drum. All right, now the fun part, brake bleeding. So I decided I'm going to use my vacuum bleeder and then I'll build up some vacuum pressure in this. Get it close to about 10. And then once I'm there, I will release. And there she goes, sucking all the air out. And then I can close it again. And as you can see, we got some old fluid in there. That does not look great. So we're gonna suck out all that old fluid until we hit the fresh stuff. Nasty. So that went on for a while and when all said and done we got nice clear fresh fluid in there. Uh, just make sure that you keep topping up that master cylinder and that you don't let that run dry or else you're starting all over again. So we got the old trailer with the old boat hooked up to the old truck and they all still look pretty good if you ask me. And we headed north, put a couple hundred miles on it, any, well actually a few hundred miles on it over the last week and uh, spent the week at the lake so I'll share with you a couple pics and um, I'll share with you a video of my father, who was in his 60s, kneeboarding behind the boat. Is that awesome or what? I'm telling you, if I'm even a quarter of that cool at his age, I'll be a happy guy. Well, listen, uh, finished up the week even with a little bit of fireworks on the water, which was awesome. I want to thank all of you for watching, as always. If you have any comments, concerns, questions, or even criticisms, throw them down in the comments section right there below me. And as always, everybody, have a great day. Oh, please like and subscribe. Subscribe! Do it! Do it! Do it now!